Hey, welcome back. I'm Bill Jellin from Mr. Excel. Well, here it is, the last podcast of 2009. Of course, it's a dueling Excel podcast, so Mike Kerwin will be joining us now. Mike uh, had someone send in this question. I think it was uh, Ahmed. Ahmed needs to do a lookup, but he needs to do a lookup on only the text portion. All right, and Mike already gave me a heads up that the formula solution is horrible, so I'm going to do what I always do, and that's VBA. Let's switch over to VBA, Alt F11. We'll insert a module and I'll say function text only entry. So entry is going to be the argument that gets passed. And what we're going to do is we're going to say uh, for i equals 1 to the length of entry. So, you know, depending on how long the entry is, uh, this char is equal to the mid of entry, comma i, comma 1. So this is just like using the mid function in Excel. And then we're going to do select case code ask, ASC, of this character. Now, the ask function in ASC function in VBA is just like the code function in Excel. See, I started to head off in the wrong direction there. Uh, select case is pretty cool. Uh, what I want to do is I want to find all the digits. So the digits are case. 48, that's a 0, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57. All right, if we get any of those, what do I want to do? I don't want to do anything because I want to ignore the digits. What I'm really interested in is everything else, case else. And we're going to say text only is equal to the old text only value, which initially will be nothing, ampersand, this char. All right. That's it. That's the code. So this is going to run through each character. It's going to take a look and see if it is one of the digits, 0 through 9. If it is, it's going to do nothing. Otherwise, it's going to build the string text only. So let's try it here. We'll try our function to make sure that it's working. So equal text only of that value. Ah, oh, look at that. It's getting just the letters. Perfect. Exactly what we need. Now that it's, you know, from here it's it's a no-brainer, right? VLOOKUP for comma two comma false, and then the final is this balance divided by that rate. All right, if we want to put all of this together, all of this together, yep, easy to do. We're going to take the text only of a two, everything but the equal sign, right here. Put that together in C two. And then B2 divided by D2, so we can pretty much just take equal B2 and copy all of those characters, control C, right here. And now we can get rid of these pieces. We end up with our final formula. All right, so uh, VBA, not many lines of code. You see it didn't take long to, to knock it out, simple little loop. Check to see if it's digits. Uh, seems to be working relatively fast. Now, Mike is going to have a much more elegant solution. I'm already going to give him the point, uh, but let's see what Mike has. Thanks, Mr. Excel. <laughs> elegant. That VBA blows away what I'm about to do right here. This is a messy formula. And here's the trouble with this. Uh, when you're trying to extract uh, certain parts of a text string like this, usually we have something like a pattern we can exploit, right? A dash. With a dash, you could use something like this, len minus find, and the left. If it was always the same three uh, length for prefix, you just use left three. But in both these cases, there's no dash, and it's not just left three. Sometimes there's two characters, sometimes there are one. Uh, finally, you could use uh, lookup maximum number of characters in a cell, this search construction, I've done video on this before, but that's not going to work either because we have duplicate letters. There's an S there and an S there, so when that construction there is looking for S, it gets a true here and a true here. Oh. So the only pattern we're left with is there's letters and there's numbers. Now this is going to get messy. I'm going to start from the inside of the formula and build our way out. The first thing is we need to extract all the individual letters and numbers and then start doing some analysis on that. So I'm going to use 
row indirect. And I'm going to construct um, in double quotes one colon n double quotes ampersand the length because I need a string of numbers uh, exactly the length of this to then uh, extract the letters. So this way it'll give us a varying length. Sometimes it'll be one, two, three, four, five. Sometimes it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Close parentheses, close parentheses. And if you highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can see we get that there. Further down, we'll get one, two, three, four, five, control Z. Uh, and that, what are we going to do with that? We'll use the mid because our goal is to extract all the individual letters. So we use mid mid of this, comma, and we usually say start in position 5 or 4, but this is an array, and this is how we'll get all of them. So there's all the starting positions, comma, and how long do we want each one? 1. So close parentheses. If we F9 this, you can see we finally extracted the individual letters, Control Z. Now we have letters. Um, what happens if I multiply this times 1? I'm going to get where the numbers are, a number, but where the text is, I get an error. So if I hit F9, ah, so now we have something that differentiates the text and the numbers, Control Z. So from that, I'm going to say which one are is error, which ones are error. And finally, now I have a text string. I'm, I'm sorry, an, an array of trues and falses. That's the first place where there's a number. That's the last place where there's a letter, Control Z. So from that now, I need to find, let me just do that again, because here's the one conceptual trick. That false, I need that position. Uh, and match, when there's duplicates like false, can, we'll find the first one. So we can use match and look up false, Control Z. So I use match and look up false comma, and I need to do an exact match because we want the first one. An exact match will find, uh, with duplicates, it always finds the uh, first one. If I hit F9, finally I get to a 4, but I really want left how many? So I need to control Z, minus 1. All right, and that's how many for the left function. So I'm going to come to the beginning, left of what? This, comma. All right, so let's see if this works. This is an array formula. Control Shift Enter, double click and send it down, and sure enough, you can see it gets that. Now I'm going to just slap that in essence. This big monster here is the lookup value in lo V lookup. So V lookup, that'll be the lookup value, right? So I come to the end and comma the table array, Broop, that little thing right there, F4, comma. Uh, the second column is what we want to return, comma, zero for false, close parentheses, control shift enter. That's uh, looking up. Oh, so it's actually looking up, but what do we want? This one divided by that. Oh, what a big nasty formula, control shift enter, double click and send it down. And there we have it. Uh, VBA wins the point and the elegance award. All right, see you next trick. You have to love the way that Mike can explain that formula. Starting from the inside out, you can actually kind of follow what's going along. Most people, I think, who encounter this formula would just be like, what the heck is this? Now, I'm interested uh, to see which is faster, uh, Mike using uh, native array formulas here, or uh, the VBA. So in the past podcast, we've had this little trick where we can turn things back to manual calculation and actually time how long it takes to calculate a range. So let's run that using Mike's method, 0.023 seconds. And let's try the VBA. We'll see how that works out. Choose the same range, Control S, 0.04. So look at that. Mike's method is uh, calculates in just about half the time as the VBA method. Uh, now, you know, unless you have 100,000 rows, it's an almost immaterial difference, two hundredths of a second. Um, but much faster to use that complicated array formula than a little bit of VBA. Well, hey, this is a, this was a, a great dueling Excel podcast. Two very different ways of going at it. I would never think to start to write that formula. I would just switch over to VBA. Mike. Uh, was able to figure out the formula, so uh, that's excellent. I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next week for another Dueling Excel podcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is Fun.